Hello and welcome to this clip looking at unit cells and lattices. Unit cells is an idea we use in chemistry to consider how individual atoms or ions stack. So this video is really just a little introduction for A-level students who might be thinking of doing the Chemistry Olympiad or Cambridge Chemistry Challenge papers. It's not trying to um, be a university level video at all, but it might be helpful if you're um, doing uh, first or second year chemistry. So, the unit cell is basically the simplest cubic arrangement of ions or atoms as they bond. So generally, obviously, ions are found in metallic or ionic lattices. So we say that the lattice points are the same as individual ions. And obviously lattices can stack like this to differing degrees of density. So looking at the lattice point locations, and remembering that each one represents an ion, you can see that there's increasing density or packing efficiency as you go from a simple cubic to body centered cubic to face centered cubic. So building up the original unit cells, starting with simple cubic, you can see that the original cube, the unit cell, might not necessarily have the number of atoms or ions that you may um, initially think. You might visualize what I'm highlighting here as a cube, but remembering that the actual lines of the cube themselves I'm tracing inside the volume of that cube you don't necessarily have all of every single atom that it contains, if that makes sense. So there's some proportions of the atoms that sit outside that cube. Looking at a body centre cubic, the only difference here is you have another ion inside the cube that is actually tucked in between the other ones that occupy the corners. And you can see the, um, the lattice building up in the animation. If we look at an animation of the face centre cubic, again, it's building up, but it's more closely packed, therefore greater packing efficiency going on here. So, we need to visualise the number of atoms or ions per unit cell. And it requires a bit of thinking, because like we said, not every single atom fully occupies the space within the cube. If we look at the corner atoms or ions, for example, this one, there's only one-eighth of that atom inside the cell. So just before we go any further, let's just think about atoms and ions as spheres, because that's what the model requires you to do. And then slice them up, so you've got half a sphere, two quarters of a sphere, and four eighths of a sphere. So inside a simple cubic cell, each corner is an eighth of an atom, and there's eight corners, so therefore you have one atom occupying the corners. No other atoms or ions inside the cube, so each unit cell contains one atom. Inside a body centre cubic cell, you've got each corner, and again, one atom occupying the corners, but each centre is one atom, so one plus one equals two, so there you have two atoms in the unit cell. Inside a face centred cubic cell, again, there are eight, eight corners, so therefore one atom occupying those corners. Each face is half of an atom, six faces, so three atoms occupying the faces, and one atom occupying the corners, and there's a total of four. So I'll do a couple of calculations uh, where you can use the volume of atoms occupying unit cell, how it can be derived. It's not exhaustive, so let's just focus on a face centred cubic cell, remembering that it contains four atoms. So looking at a diagram of one side of the cube, obviously if you take the length A, then Pythagoras' theorem suggests that the length of that diagonal D is uh, A root 2, remembering Pythagoras' theorem. The square of the hypotenuse is the sum of the squares of the two sides. So if we imagine atoms lined up along this diagonal like this, and think of them as atoms inside a cube. So therefore, um, the value 4r is going to be the same as a root 2, that we just worked out. So the length of the diagonal is 4 times the radius, so 4r is a root 2. The volume of the sphere is four third pi r cubed, so four spheres inside the cell. So the volume of the um, atoms inside the cell is 16 over 3 pi r cubed. If we take the length of one side, which we worked out as um, a root 2, that's 16 over third, that's 16 over 3 times pi, in brackets, a root 2 over 4 cubed. So there are lots of ways to relate it to the geometry of a cube, see how many atoms are packed inside it. Uh, we've been running out of time a bit here, so hopefully this is a reasonably useful introduction. Until next time, thanks a lot. See you soon.